What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with Ross Pro Part 2. Yep, it is here, everybody. The long-awaited sequel to the, I guess you could say, most infamous series on this channel. I know it's been a while, but finally I had time to work on this video. If you do enjoy these type of videos, tell me down below in the comments down below. Smash the like button down below. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the Twitter accounts in the description down below. Go follow the Rumble page for exclusive content. And of course, I hope and recommend you join the channel today. As all of the support does help with the daily content we all know and love. And these bigger videos that do take longer than the usual content. So I hope you enjoy part two. It is officially Ross Perot's second year in office, as in his first year, he got a lot accomplished considering the fact that he wasn't part of either party. He wasn't a Republican. He wasn't a Democrat. He wasn't even a third party. He was an independent to the truest extent an independent could possibly be. Now, as a quick recap of his first year in office, he was able to get through a balanced budget, or at least a significant cut to the national deficit. He also was able to get some kind of health care reform passed. Even if it was something as minor as a Medicaid expansion program, it still was more than Bill Clinton accomplished in his first couple years of office. But arguably, the biggest policy achievement in, our, in this timeline over ours was related to the trade deal with Canada and Mexico, as NAFTA in this timeline never would have happened, and instead some kind of trade deal that's similar to what is known as the USMCA today would have probably gotten through because Ross Pro was vehemently against NAFTA, and it's very unlikely it would have passed in this timeline. Now, today's focus will be on the 1994 congressional elections and the 1996 presidential elections and I do think we will see arguably the biggest change come from American politics with these two elections as while Ross Pro did get a lot accomplished his biggest impact that we could still feel to this day would be the creation of a major third party now in our timeline Ross Pro did actually create a third party it was called the reform party now he did create this in 1995 so it isn't far-fetched to say that he would have created a very similar third party in 1993 or maybe in 1994. And it's very likely that this reform party would have actually succeeded unlike our timeline. Now, there's a multitude of reasons of why the reform party failed in our timeline. But arguably the biggest reason was the lack of direction by the reform party. Because after Ross Perot left... Nobody really knew what the Reform Party stood for. Was it a right-wing party? Was it a left-wing party? Was it Jesse Ventura in Minnesota's party? It was complete chaos. So in this timeline, I do think with Ross Perot being the president in particular and leading the party into a 1994 midterms, I do think at least for a short while, the Reform Party would be more stable than it was in our timeline. Now, the Reform Party in our timeline, I do think, would have a very similar platform of the Reform Party in this Ross Pro victory timeline, which included things such as a balanced budget, campaign finance reform, enforcement of immigration laws, opposition to free trade agreements like NAFTA, term limits on representatives, the direct election of the president, though that one may be thrown out it's kind of hard to tell with a couple of these especially with the direct election of u.s president by popular vote but i do think the first five in particular would be the main part of the reform party which kind of makes sense considering it is called the reform party they're trying to push for reform in america but the question is this how would this new reform party do in the famous 1994 midterms. So the 1994 midterm is considered one of the most famous midterms in American politics because it really set the modern day precedent for the midterm being an absolute beatdown of the party that holds the White House. It was the first time 
in almost 40 years that the Republicans gained the House of Representatives back. They gained 54 seats in the House with a 230 seat majority, while in the Senate, Republicans gained a Senate majority with an eight seat gain in 94. Now there is much argument about why this happened, but the biggest one most people agree with was the Republican party did push something called the commitment to America, which was a national policy for Republicans have run on nationally. So people knew exactly what Republicans were standing for and what they would do if they did gain a majority in the House of Representatives. Now, in this timeline, I do think Republicans would still gain the House of Representatives and the United States Senate for the simple fact that Democrats at this time, especially after getting walloped in 1992, were in a bit of a disarray. And well, a Republican revolution was going to happen, especially with Newt Gingrich taking over the Republican congressional majority, or at this time, the minority. But this wouldn't be the story of 94. The main story would be the fact that the Reform Party of the United States would gain probably one or two Senate seats at the very most. That's best case scenario, while gaining probably 30, 40 seats in the House of Representatives due to the fact that Ross Perot would probably be fairly popular and people would be more open to the idea of voting third party, especially with a third party president in the White House. Now, let me be 100% clear. That is the best case scenario for the Reform Party in 94. A more realistic scenario, they probably do gain closer to 20 seats in the House, while maybe, maybe picking one off in the Senate. But the thing is, this congressional delegation for the Reform Party would be one of the most mixed matched delegations you could probably ever meet. Now, the reason for this is simple, as while, yes, Ross Perot was still the figurehead of the party, you still had two major factions developing. You had the more socially conservative, right-wing part of the party that had people similar to Pat Buchanan, which would dominate places like the Deep South and the Great Plains, while you had the more progressive-leaning side of the Reform Party that would do better in the Northeast and out west so essentially this government in the house of representatives would be a coalition government as you would probably see several reform party caucus with the republicans and several caucus with the democrats but still work mostly with ross perot to get stuff passed as they did agree on most things so yeah after 94 the story would be the fact that a major third party has finally breaking in to the House of Representatives and maybe even in the United States Senate. But the question is this, what about 1996? So 1996 would obviously be a presidential year and in this timeline, Ross Perot would 100% run for re-election as he's really the only one, especially at this time, that could even have a sliver of hope of winning as Reform Party candidate. Maybe in a couple of years, they could run somebody else, but for now, Ross Perot is really their only option as he does have the base, he is an incumbent president, fairly well liked, and he has been demonstrating he is a fairly effective president. Now, for his opponents, I do think it would be very similar to our timeline. I do think Bob Dole would be the Republican nominee for the simple fact that he did win the nomination in 96 and well many people kind of agreed it was his quote-unquote turn to be the nominee but the democrats side well the democrats at this time would still be in a kind of a disarray state don't know what they're supposed to do now that there is a major third party that seems to be hurting them more and more as each election goes by in my opinion the two most realistic scenarios at this time would be either a more progressive like Ted Kennedy, who would be somebody that they would try to go back to as he does have the Kennedy name and the Democrat party may want to try to rejuvenate the Democrat base with a Kennedy. On the other hand, you still have a conservative base, especially in the South that would dominate the primaries. And I do think somebody like Al Gore 
would be the more conservative candidate this election. He did run in 88, he did do good, and in 92 he was on the ticket, so it is a serious possibility it is one of those two. But I do think at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter who the Democrats run as. It comes down to Kennedy does better in the more northeastern, progressive part of America, while Al Gore does better in more moderate, conservative states. Now, for hypothetical reasons, Ice Pro, who in this timeline won, and, of course, Bob Dole. So, really not much changing from 96 outside of Al Gore being the nominee for the Democrats and Pro be being the president. I do think, however, at the end of the day, Pro would have been fairly popular and he would have cruised to re-election. Now, the question is, who would have taken second place? Would have been the Democrats or the Republicans? I actually think that in this timeline, Republicans actually take third place in the Electoral College as Bob Dole really didn't have the appeal as somebody like George Bush, while Al Gore did appeal to the more Southern conservative, instead maybe a bit more blue and maybe a bit more yellow, AKA independent. So yeah, at the end of the day, Ross Perot would have won re-election. It's really only a matter of who he would have went against and how good he would have done. But the question is, what happens through 96 and 2000? If I'm being 100% honest, I don't think much changes. The only real change is I doubt Pro would have got impeached. That's really the only change I could see happening from our timeline to this timeline. Outside of that, outside maybe a change in the budget, maybe there would have really been much change as well. Bill Clinton did get a lot of stuff done in the second term that would have probably been very similar to that of... Ross Pro, so nothing would have changed much. I doubt he would have gone into another war. He was anti-war, so Ross Pro's second term essentially was Bill Clinton's just without the scandals. So yep, folks, that's it for today's video. I know this is kind of a simpler video. I did want to focus on 94 and 96. Not much really changes in Pro's second term because Republicans would still have the majority and it just Bill Clinton's presidency just without the scandals and maybe a better health care plan. But there is a major third party. And going into part three, the Reform Party has a serious question for not 2000. Who will be their nominee? I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.